we'll just jump straight into mine because uh, this is literally one of my favourite comics of all time, especially um, the earlier few volumes where you're still discovering all the characters and everything. So it's so East of West, so you've got um, Jonathan Hickman, who's who, who does loads of really great original creator-driven work, but then also jumps into Marvel. And, you know, he's currently writing for X-Men. He's done loads of great stuff. He's done Avengers in the past few years. His run on that's great. He's done a great run on Fantastic Four, which I've still not read, but I will catch up on. Um, and the names escape me, but I think it's Nick Dragota, the artist. I could be wrong about that. I'll, I'll find out for you because I've, I've, got, I've got some notes written down here. Oh, you know what? I didn't. I wrote them down and thought, you know what? Fuck him. This is Lewis's bit. <laughs> Anyway, I wrote them down for um, Jupiter's Legacy in case yeah. you know in, in case we uh, did get onto that. But if I got it wrong, it'll be up in text below me with a big arrow saying "Nobad." Yeah. Um, how how but, could you get it wrong, Lewis? It's one of your favourites. You don't know the <laughs> But but basically, uh, much in some ways a much simpler setup where we very we're introduced to a character who who looks like the Pale Rider, the traditional idea of death. And it's not a metaphor. You literally find out pretty quick. Oh no, th- this is death. Yeah. Um, uh, Mister tra- mis- mis- Death to you. Yeah. <laughs> he's travelling with two almost demonic-looking uh, Native American characters who are who are who are called witches. They're known as like witches, and you find out very quickly that he's essentially looking for revenge because he's been betrayed by the other horsemen, even though technically he was betraying them. Because another romance, everything we do ends up being a romance. He he is in love and has a child with a human woman who is the heir to this um, empire. And where it's set basically is in America, uh, but it's like a it's like a what if? It's like a an else world. Um, well, yeah, ge- geographically, what we know is America, but in in yeah, their world, but, it's seven separate kingdoms, isn't it? Almost exactly, yeah, uh, and. It's one of those where it's hard to talk too much about specific plot points or characters without spoiling things because it's it's funny. So, so you read the first couple of volumes and it's so sometimes seems so cut and dry to be like it's like a sci-fi action. It's post-apocalyptic. It's about these characters are getting from A to B, and when they get there, they'll either destroy the world or 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 they won't, and then it'll be good up versus evil. But every volume, characters betray each other. Characters you thought were goodies are baddies, vice yeah. versa. Uh, you end up rooting for people that you really didn't think didn't think you would. And the whole time, you love death. Well, this is <laughs> it. I think, I, th- I think what you said then about, you know, people betray people all the time, goodies become baddies, yeah. baddies become goodies. Like, well, you know what? If you actually think about it, your main character is death. What did you think yeah. was going to happen? You're already supposed. You're already back in the wrong horse in a way. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I love that it's set. You know, in this in the future, but he's still got two six shooters, so he's still like, you know, shooting around. So basically, the 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 setup is it's the American Civil War, and an asteroid comes down, and then because of that, history takes a different turn of a yeah. slightly longer civil war. Um, so you've got New Orleans, which is like the former slaves, and then you've got Texas, and um, is it is it like the Kingdom of, of Mao? They're, they've got their yeah, own. Exactly, got, yeah, exactly, yeah. That's yeah, like, it's a like third. over on the West, they've got their own, yeah. yeah. Uh, you've got like the more traditional uh, American, uh, I think they're called the Democrats or the Democratic. Oh, American, and they've got the, the got... white, what's it called? The White Tower instead of the White House? Yeah, yeah. And then there's the Black Tower and all this sort of stuff, yeah. So, so, so there's loads. I mean, we could literally do a podcast on just talking about the structure of that version of America. There's even an issue further into it. After you've got through the first two or three volumes worth, it almost, at that point, once you've already had like loads of story and loads of things happen with these characters and kingdoms that you don't know what's going on, at that point, and at that point, some of them, I think, have either been destroyed or they're out of it or things have changed. Then they go, oh, by the way... um, this is this version of America, and here's the timeline, and you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> we're we're already knee deep. I mean, but, we've but, we've not actually we've not actually talked about uh, the message. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's, I don't even. I, don't, I mean, I'm obviously way way earlier on in the in the in the run than, than you are, and what I my my main thing was the first, especially the first um, 
issue. I felt like I was not struggling, but like I was frantically trying to keep up with what was going on because so much information's dumped on you, but with absolutely no context or backstory. And you're like, oh, right. These kids are just kind of ripping themselves out of this um, pentagram sort of on, on the floor and they're tied into it. But are they twigs or are they, is it electrical cable? What What's going on? Oh, no time. They're off. Um, Death's wearing all white. Why is he wearing all white? We, we don't know. Are the kids in the same time period as, as death? Is this who's in front of who? Is it the same... And you literally don't, you get given the information and then they swiftly move on. So I was, yeah. the it, it, it really it really messes with your own pace when you're reading yeah. it. You feel like you're galloping along trying to just keep up with this, yeah. this thing that's going on. But then when you start getting a tiny little bit of like context, uh, I, I, was, I was reading it going, this is, this is one of the greatest gifts that I've ever been given when knowing that you'd given like <laughs> given me this thing. It's like it's so good. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the character design, both um, visually yeah. and and in terms of written, the story is great. The uh, it that that's one of the hallmarks of Jonathan Hickman. Some people don't always like it, but I do. That he'll he'll set up events. He'll, he'll, or he'll introduce you to an event or a character or, or a concept because he even does it within the, the concepts of like the Avengers and X-Men where something will be happening and you're like, hang on, I thought that... And it's like, moving on, here's the next thing. Yeah, yeah, and and yeah. it will get explained yeah. or, it, or it will pay off, but he's trusting that, that, that the audience will, if they want to, they'll invest the time to get there. Yeah. And, and, and it, it's worth it for is, anything of his. Is the message as big and as important in the context of their world as it feels like it is it isn't it isn't so it changes and that's what's great about it so it's of even the way the the book is structured in terms of chapters starting and ending with like text on a page and things with the, tri- with the triangles very, and the yeah it, it feels very biblical and it also feels very satanic and it has the, yeah. some of those Plays with that Christian iconography. ideas and and yeah exactly and then it, it plays into that and then at some points it becomes really sciencey and very much it's all about cause and effects and it's all about um like time and it's it's all about physical realities and dimensions and then then sometimes it's it's just straight back to no no here's a prophecy and actually everything that's happening yeah as the story goes on yeah there's already a verse for that yeah and then it's that thing of are these characters living up to a verse because in their head something is they think something is going to happen so they're doing it or is it no actually yeah this is literal prophecy because some of the things how could these characters orchestrate it to get to this point yeah. and and at the same time again the main character is death the grim reaper and he's one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse and it's not like oh are these like aliens are these interdimensional demons he's like no no as far as we're concerned these are the four horsemen in yeah. the traditional sense and the people and, in that world know they is, are Exactly, and their job is to end the world, and it's like, all right, okay, yeah. cool. And death's decided. No, actually, uh, I quite like someone. Yeah, <laughs> and I've got a baby somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but it, yeah, because yeah, the, the message is essentially a prophecy written by. Is it three people? All they've all done little sections of it. Well, where I'm at, I think it's three people. Yeah, have all yeah. done little sections that have been then put together, and that is that is the 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 sort of the message i don't think everyone's is everyone in the world aware of the message or is it just the people in charge so, or the so higher what, ups or yeah so this is what's really fun about it is that it treats certain religious prophecies the same way we do in real life where some people out there really buy into it and that's what they're all about and what and what they fear and and they might live the life by it and the certain people it gets very conspiratorial where certain people at the heads of governments, the heads of organisations, are almost pushing for, oh, we think we've got to end the world because of this thing, because that's blah, blah, blah. But then most people are kind of just doing what they're doing. And, yeah. and and to be fair, you don't get a lot of man on the street point of view. That's what I was going to say. Street. Yeah, that's yeah. the big, big difference between the two books, between Saga and, and East of West, is that most of saga is actually you do see what the little the little guys are doing well the main characters are little guys in a in yeah. a way yeah um yeah. but i think actually i really enjoyed having both of them at certain points reading both both books um yeah yeah i mean i just keep thinking back to what death looks like and his horse it's essentially 
you know a mega cannon with legs that he run that runs about and but even his two witches um is it crow and is it wolf crow and wolf they're just called yeah yeah just they look so cool like like no no facial features like crow she's just a black silhouette with white bits of white clothing on her she looks really cool yeah, yeah it's I'm, it, it, and, and it's great and it's also got moments again a bit like saga where there'll be nudity or like ultra violence and it's but it's so gorgeous the way it's drawn and it's, I think I think for me it takes me out of it a little bit less because I, I read a lot of weird titles like that but but it, again it's another one where it's like this isn't you know this isn't your average X-Men book or yeah um, Superman book and, and that's not a bad thing for on either way but yeah. it, it's definitely more more mature themes <laughs> yeah yeah only having book one um because there's, there's, there's the, not the compendium, but they've got a year one, haven't they? Which is a which is a, a, a combination of not yeah, it's like year of the apocalypse, book one, book two, book three. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if three's out yet. Oh, I'm not I, sure. I think I think they've all been out and then gone. Into so reprint. this is what happens with yeah, yeah with Jonathan Hickman books. They sell out really fast. I can't <laughs> so, say why. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can get your hands on them, kids, get your hands on them. Um, well, you can, but yeah. So I, I've got the the ten volumes as just standard trade paperback. They do seem like they're more accessible to get a hold of, actually, yeah. than it, at the moment, it, anyway. Yeah, there tends to be a lot more of those. What's good about the apocalypse books, it looks like, is that they're oversized, so so they're a bit bigger printing. So I mean, artwork like that, the bigger the better. Let, let's yeah. make it happen. Yeah, definitely. So at some point, I'll probably try and get my hands on them as well. I think I sent you just. <laughs> Just a, a a message of a photograph of one of the pages, just like how good does this look? Yeah, and it's it's almost like quite tattoo a, worthy. Yeah, it's almost yeah. very. Um, actually, I might just pop that up on on the on the pod as well now for people to see. It's almost. Yeah. <laughs> Don't put it there. Just... <laughs> oh, it's a picture of me holding me. <laughs> I might not put the image up now. I might just put an, an extra image of you. Just. <laughs> um, but yeah, the image has got very. It's got elements of like old school sort of almost um, spaghetti western or black and white um, American yeah. western TV show imagery of like the shot through the opponent's legs on a standoff and yeah it's just it, but again it's just beautiful even think little things in the background how they've drawn the uh, the rock work and, and stuff it's just it's just very very visually appealing yeah definitely and and a, a similar thing it has with Saga it is as you mentioned at the start is the pace again it, it's a Jonathan Hickman hallmark is that a lot of the time you are almost think things are happening so fast and then he's not afraid to then for a couple issues it's very slow or you know exposition dump this issue is literally a series of maps and timelines and graphs and the, and all it is is uh you know boom start of the civil war uh middle of the civil war end of civil yeah and it's just that and it's just tight and it's like yeah great I mean, I'm, it's funny I'm though, isn't it? Because obviously you are, as a reader, in charge of your own pace, and yet you still manage to get roped into it, and you're going yeah. down, you know this this, you know this this Rabbit pace. <laughs> I, you know what? I was fighting so hard <laughs> not to say it, and the only thing that was going through my head was rabbit hole. Just say rabbit hole. It's rabbit, Charlie. It's definitely the rabbit hole. Just say it. And I was like, no, no, <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Do you know what it is for me as well? I think. It's the rabbit hole. I thought so. It's the rabbit hole, but also a well-written comic book like this, with that type of pacing, it feels more like reading a script. And I think this is another thing where, in my mind, my wires get crossed, and I think this is so cinematic. It's like no, no, it's just great storytelling. Yeah. But but it but it reminds me specifically of I recently read uh, Max Landis self-published a uh, a short theatre screenplay called Polybius and um, it's about I could be butchering the pronunciation I apologise it's probably to hand somewhere so I could even just show it I think you'll find it's Belabius but um... (laughs) and it's basically like a a, a very short here we go it's not long Uh, it's a play it's a screenplay literally for a play Uh, script whatever and um, the the way he talks and the way he writes, it's very clear he has that fast pace. And the way I read in that, I literally started in bed one night thinking, oh, I'll read a few pages and see if I get into it. 
and I stayed up for about two or three hours just and just read it from front to back. And these kind of comics have that thing where yeah. you think, ah, 20 minutes while I get in bed and you're up for a couple hours reading because it's just so... It gives you just enough to what... You, oh, I need yeah. to know what's next. I need to know what the next thing is. Yeah. I know I I love that thought this this not that thought that feeling when you're in when you've invested in something and I think going back to Saga I didn't have that instantly at the beginning but now I've definitely got it like it's funny my missus is she's an avid reader she's always she's always read and she read she reads in bed and so I I had my massive saga you know wait <laughs> She was helping me turn the pages together, <laughs> pulling them over. I was reading Saga, and before I knew it, it was three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that whole reading to go to sleep. Yeah. Read, reading to stay awake. <laughs> like, it was... We're but, just, you know... We're, we're just wild. We're just a couple of <laughs> wild guys. Lads, 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 lads. I was up all night reading this play, thinking, oh, do you know what? Get a couple of friends together. We could actually put this on. In fact, Max even says in the back, I'd, I'd love to see if you go and out there and make this. <laughs> lads, 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 lads. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just a rock and roll lifestyle we're leading, Lou. What can you say? <laughs> just the way we roll here. Uh, I've, I've, not, I've not got to... I've, I said it's one of my favourite um, comics of all time, but I don't have tons to say about East of West. It is very much a read it and experience it. And like the best, I guess, series or franchises, there's certain volumes or certain periods of the story where it feels like you're just reading or watching an action film. It's just very much yeah. about there's a battle, it's exciting, stuff's going on. And then there's whole chapters or volumes where it is so character-based. It is so yeah. tied to the emotions or, or the schemes or the plans. And it's just as compelling. I think the one thing for me that... It's slightly a more enjoyable east of east of west than than saga, and I think because because it's more world changing. Obviously, both both stories have got world changing stories within them, but our main characters are wrapped up in the events of saga, whereas our main characters in east of west are the ones pushing the agenda. They're the ones in charge of it, so there's much more classic comic payoff open um set pieces like the big battles i'm thinking when when death goes to um i think is it called the the mao kingdom or whatever it's called when he he goes there and he hits the wall and all that like the the the, not massacre but the big set piece fights and that there's a lot more of that in east of west so you do get that sort of like you know that for me that boyish of like yeah weapons and you know enjoyment (laughs) enjoyment part of it um, and that's not to say that there's not any deep emotional things going on. It it just it takes a little bit longer in East of West for that stuff to to drip out to realise what death is going through and his connections to humanity and and the reason why he's struggling. That it's not just he fancies some girl. It's a lot deeper than that. The situation that he's found himself in over over these years. Um, whereas I think Saga's almost the other way around. You see that quite early on, and then the, and then the bigger once you start finding out about the characters and the actual alliances between these characters sort of line up a bit more, that's when the bigger set pieces start, start to happen. Yeah. Um, but in a, in a very strange way, I think they're, they're great um, companion pieces with each other to be, to be reading them around, around a similar time. They're different enough yeah. that I've never confused any story points going forward or anything like that, or mixed up any sort of, um, I use the word law quite a lot. I've realised that when I do it in the editing, but um, you, I don't confuse the law between the two between the two titles. Um, and I think because they are similar enough, but they're also quite they're quite set. They know what they are. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, as a reader, makes it very very easy because they know what they're talking about, and you're obviously going off what they're going on about. So it, you know you, you follow them you follow them down that way. Yeah, I I definitely agree with that. I think, I think basically, great double bill or great companion pieces to each other, like spiritual sequels or spiritual, you know, Buddies. sort of ma- match. 
Yeah, like, like matches, and it's good to read them near each other. But I, I'm the same. I'll tend to have three or four books at the same time that I'm reading, and it'll be the same with comics and sometimes with TV series or games that I'm watching. If it's something I've watched a million times before or read a million times before, it's a little bit easier to to dip in and out of. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, definitely. But then with things like this, like you say, it's got to have its own voice or its own identity to really. Especially if, if you're reading a couple of sci-fi things at the same time. For me, sometimes what I'll tend to do is I might have like a science novel or quite factual thing I'm reading and a couple nights a week I'll read that, I'll read a few chapters and then the other nights I'll just reread Lord of the Rings or I'll yeah. read something more fun and fantasy um, or, or more action-paced. And this is one of the few times where I've gone, like you say, the similarities are there and there's definitely lines to draw between them. But it only helps each other out. Yeah, in it's funny because the differences and the different ways to tell that kind of story. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. have picked them to read at the same time. It's just a happy coincidence. Coincidence, yeah. it's kind of happened because I would have thought that, like, oh, maybe the similarities are too, are too strong, and it would get a little bit muddied. Not necessarily confusing yourself, but you know, oh, this is that thing again, but in Saga's version of this yeah. is Saga did this bit in East of West slightly differently, but it doesn't really. You know, it's definitive enough yeah. between the two between the two titles that it's you know it's it's really quite enjoyable and you know to have them both there. Yeah, definitely. I'll, um, I learn. I think to sum up because we spent a lot of time talking about like you know we're really cool. We picked the image comics, but I I thought we'd quickly mention a few either storylines or characters from the more obvious picks that that we like and that we think if people haven't already maybe go and give them a read. Uh, or even just give an idea of what kind of stuff we normally read. Like, for example, Batman. I mean, I literally did criminology at university because he did it. Um, <laughs> you know, and he's there. Um, <laughs> and, like, at the, so at the moment, I'm also reading or rereading Batman Nightfall, the Nightfall saga, when nice. Bane breaks his back. Um, Hush is one of my favourite all time comic stories and that's one of those where it has it's basically you know pick at any point in batman's career past the first couple of years and yet it can take place then yeah um, it, but the, the particular story has a beginning middle end it has ties to elsewhere it has an original character for this story who then comes back so it's got a little bit of elements of, of a lot of the things that sometimes you think oh, well it just will keep going on the art invincible or immortal but it doesn't matter, it's just a fun story. And there's a whole rogues gallery in there. So yeah. you get to see a little bit of everyone, which is nice. Yeah. No, I mean I'm a i am I mean it, I, I go back to what I was saying at the beginning. Like we're not it's not about knocking DC and Marvel. Like my, my love of uh, I was gonna say my love of comic books is from DC and Marvel, but I would mo I would argue that my love of a certain genres of films are, are based on those on those comics. Yeah. Like for me, they're all stories and they all, you know, weave into each other. Um I originally I did it the other way around, so I I fell in love with the with the animated series of Spider Man. Yeah. That was my that was my. I mean, I, I really like the, the the animated series of Batman, and I think in some ways that actually stands up a lot better than oh, than the Spider Man one. <laughs> in um, a lot of ways, yeah. But that was my that was my sort yeah. of um, gateway into into the sort of the superhero world, not comic or film or whatever, just the superhero world. Yeah. So then when I found out there were comics afterwards, obviously we're talking child brain here, you go, oh, right, this this exists. And then they even did the shared universe in the Spider-Man. So like X-Men are part of it, Punisher was part of it. And, and, and you know, it it all we like we like weaves in. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think for me, Spider-Man will always be my, like my main, my main hero regardless of what you know happens with him um do, but... do, do you know what's funny with like with spider-man for me is he's like the obvious like oh, if, you, if you want to get into comic books that's a really good one to start with because he's he's relatable he's he starts out a bit nerdy and then he he could become a jock or become cool but actually no he's still who he is at heart and all yeah. that and, and he's science he uses his brain not just his super strength. i never really loved a spider-man comic until I started reading Ultimate Spider-Man, and that's very divisive for Spider-Man fans, where you either love it or hate it. And for me, I really enjoyed it, and I, th I think maybe it goes back to we're talking about at the start about jumping on points. I felt like 
there's, there wasn't tons of lore of Spider-Man that I had yeah. to learn. It was just kind of like, oh, this is like a new version of a lot of those things that I'm, I'm aware of. And and it's like, oh, this is like my own little uh, my own little run of Spider-Man that I can enjoy from the start. Do you know what I mean? It's quite, I've, quite I've, cool. I've struggled with, with sort of versions of, um, not necessarily Spider-Man, but versions of Peter. Yeah. So versions of Peter Parker where I think they've made him way too nerdy and way too geeky. Like, you know... <laughs> You know, like how Clark Kent is, you know, you've got your glasses, he's the reporter, he's a bit of a bumbler, especially in like the, you know, the ori- not the original films, because there's many films, but we're talking um, Christopher Reeves? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. His movie, like, he gets stuck on the on the, on a, on a trolley, like dolly, in, in a hotel, and, oh, oh, and he's bumbling away and, and gets whisked off, and, you know, that bumbling, geeky sort of nerdy character. And I think sometimes they've adopted that with Peter's character. And I think, yes, he is, he is nerdy. He was a good student, but he wasn't like, for me, he was never the sort of uber nerd. He was more towards the middle of the road yeah. in, in a school. Kind like, of went unnoticed a lot. Yeah. And, like yeah. If, he, if he ended up in the crosshairs of the school bully, then he would get it. But it wasn't like the bully was only ever after Peter in a, in a way. So maybe that was just the version that I saw. And that's the one that I sort of, I like identify with. Yeah, and I like the fact that it wasn't about the the massive juxtaposition between a hero and you know a complete loser, and that's that's the the the, the journey between those two sides is what makes the character. It was almost like no, no, he's just he's just a regular dude, like who you know anyone could do you know, could do this essentially, yeah. and that's what I really liked about about the Peter Parker character. I, I think as well with with Spider-Man, like the the very original design for Peter Parker and the very the way he was first written, when you look at it, it is very uber nerd. But then, when you listen to Stan Lee talk about Peter Parker and when you read, still very early Spider-Man, but when he was a little bit older, he might have been that in the high school years, but he was very much just the everyman after that, despite yeah. how smart well, he was. And it's think, a bit more think relatable. About, yeah, think know. about the cartoon, the animated one in the nineties. Like he is. You know he's quite he's he's, a, he's good looking he's tall he, I mean he I mean he has a lot of girlfriends in it like this guy is not your sort of geek <laughs> the geek you know the geek that that the yeah. like you know that TV portrays like a geek you know should be yeah, and I think yeah. that it, it's almost really difficult if you really enjoy a certain version to ever get rid of that version of it yeah to allow for something else but. Um, yeah, I've always been I've always been massively massively informed with my like the big the big two comic book um, producers by the the animated versions that I first fell in love with as a kid. Yeah, well, that's funnily enough some some of the first comics, one of the first comics I ever read or at least remember consciously reading and really getting it was animated series. Um, so the Harley Quinn origin, the Mad Love book, I still have. From when I was very young, a family friend got me the variant cover of the Mad Love story. Okay. Um, and I've still got it to this day. If it was in mint condition, it'd be worth quite a bit of money. Sadly, it's a little bit boxed up, but I like that. It's got character. I, I've i literally had that since I was probably three or four years old. Oh, so nice. That, that shows where it comes from. But th- this was my first introduction to um, comic book and superhero lore, universe, whatever. Um, and it's funny how it's the comic spin-off of a cartoon spin-off of one of the biggest comics ever was the thing that got yeah. me into it <laughs> harley quinn is one of the only she's lauded isn't she as one of the only characters who was created on the tv show and was so good that she got rolled into the comics rather than the other way around yeah and yeah i i, I know it's it's not even one of those did you know it's, it's pretty well known now but i still really like that fact that it gives so much validity and so much um I don't know the right the writing of the of the cartoon was so good that it actually went back the other way. Yeah, it does with other characters as well because, like Mister Freeze, for example, the way Mister Freeze is portrayed in that series, that's what everyone thinks of as Mister Freeze. Yeah, but it, it wasn't that before that. It was the Arnold Schwarzenegger, like very cheesy, over the top, very. Yeah. And in this, they got a really traditional old Hollywood actor to really give some emotion and pathos for the character. Yeah, and it becomes this tragic. You know, um, oh, but the art, villain, the art deco so. styling of the of the drawing of the series just really lends itself to it, doesn't yeah. it? Like, you know, because he's got the round glasses on, hasn't he? And he's it's soulless and 
you know the sadness that's in his that's yeah. in his character really comes across like really yeah. easily in it yeah it's great have, have you got any spider-man like, like stories or periods that you'd recommend for people to jump in on if they've not because i mean there's loads out there yeah i mean it'd be difficult i mean i really like the whole um, like clone saga with like Ben Riley and and really? Kane you and like all that. that saga. Yeah, I Ooh. really, I really liked You're it. You're the guy. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's just me. I think what I really liked about it is that it let Peter be Peter, yeah. without Spider Man for a little bit, and someone else got to take, you know, take on the mantle of it, um, and uh, like uh, having a different version. Like I thought the, I thought the Scarlet Spider Man looked really cool. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he had like a little, you know, no sleeve denim jacket sort of thing on, and yeah, yeah. I thought he was really cool. <laughs> Plus, when Ben Riley becomes Ben Riley or goes off as Ben Riley, mm. he has blonde hair. So I was like, wait a second, I'm like, my hair's darkened now. But when I was a kid, it was. I was like, wait a minute, Spider Man. Even though he's Ben Riley, he's now got. Blonde. I could be Spider Man. I mean. Yeah, but and I, I think it also it strengthened those connections to to that world that, that they were in. Yeah, that yeah. I, that I really liked. But yeah, I, I do like all that clone saga and 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 all that. Um, and in in a way, it did, if I remember correctly, it did come into the the cartoon as well in a very different in a different way, like a watered down, well, yeah. not even necessarily a watered down version, a, sh- a shorter, condensed, more palatable version of it for for the cartoon yeah i think that fox kids run of of the marvel shared universe especially x-men animated series and um spider-man animated series the thing they absolutely nailed was take the stories from the comics and they might have been two or three years long but you know what let's get the saga down to a a one or two episode run and let's let's just pick out the things the main things and what's meant to be there and let's pick let's hit yeah hit the the hot topics and then yeah. Play the hits. Play the hits. <laughs> the, the X-Men hits. The X-Men, that's another favourite of mine. Oh, Again, an yeah. animated series. And um, another one that can be quite divisive, even amongst X-Men fans, is certain periods and story arcs which people do and don't like. Chris Claremont and Jim Lee is the obvious, one of the best comic runs ever of anyone. Still one of the best-selling runs of all time. That X-Men number one from when they uh, did the relaunch. Uh, Jonathan Hickman's run at the moment. Um, for me, for me though, one if you're gonna if you're gonna read an X Men book, after doing a little bit of reading around it, read Joss Whedon's Astonishing X Men run. He's two years on there. Uh, Joss Whedon and I think it's John Cassidy who does the artwork. It, just phenomenal. And again, cinematic. Is that the one? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the run that was done into the um... motion comic? Yeah. Motion the comic. Knights, yeah. Yeah. Which got up there somewhere yeah. that is really good it's a yeah, yeah that's I, I would actually say if anyone wants to start getting into comics maybe maybe watch that first it's a good little sort of bridge into you know into that into that world yeah um but yeah i think it comes down to if you want to get into comics just get something that you know you're already interested in if you read something that doesn't make sense go on the internet just google a bit of stuff like you know <laughs> find out those those little bits and then, yeah. and, then and then carry on going like or just wait a month. They'll do a reboot of it somehow. <laughs> and then they'll bring everything else back into it. You know, the multiverse uh, doesn't exist anymore. Really? Oh, no, it exists again now. Right, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. There'll, there'll, there'll be a time and a place for you. Maybe we'll do a separate video where we literally go, you know, how to read a comic. <laughs> <laughs> how to get into comic books. And we'll just do yeah. it. We'll do a whole thing. Yeah. I, I think we'll call it a day there. Pretty happy with that. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I'm always, I'm always happy. It's fine. It's fine. Bye. No, we forgot the catchphrase. No, leave this in. <laughs> oh. Oh. Anything else you want to say, Charlie? Yeah, just remember, guys, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. big howdy and a big thank you to everybody who has watched or listened if you enjoy our podcast please hit follow like and subscribe whatever platform you're on rate us and review us turn on notifications for our next episode and you'll be really helping us to grow and keep building a great community you can get in touch with us on all the socials via at drh pod or for us individually it's lewis alex ryan and underscore charlie follows
it's not long.